Hmm. Field theory. Great. Discuss field theory. A lot of people are actually recently watching my crazy videos. Like, what's this guy doing field theory videos all of a sudden? It's like, I've done like well over a thousand of them over the past several years. Um, interesting uh, secret. It's not interesting to me. I, I always try to find neat ways to explain things so people could understand. Like, uh, people think that actually something is occurring between two magnets. Now, of course, it's incorrect to refer to magnetic attraction because there's no such thing. Magnetism is, by definition, force in motion. But regardless of that, but the uh, common layman's conception of uh, seeing magnetic attraction, quote-unquote, or magnetic repulsion, they think that actually something is going on between those two magnets and there is nothing going on between them. well sure there is and what sort of insane statement is that no nothing is occurring if we were actually to place a vacuum between the two magnets and eliminate absolutely every bit of particle of course we can't create a complete vacuum you know there's nothing occurring anymore between those two magnets and it is occurring between two bodies as they actually uh, um, orbit each other nothing is occurring between two magnets now here's a simple question since we have this uh, conception through our daily ideation that, uh, you know, a person casts a shadow, right? I mean, the sun's at uh, 10 o'clock on the horizon, you're casting a, a shadow on the sidewalk. The shadow is not a property of the person that is casting it, rather the nature of the person as relational to the field. In this case, it would be the longitudinal... Um, uh, field perturbation that we call electromagnetic radiation, which is technically a coaxial circuit. Let's just say light, right? Light's pouring down on somebody. Of course, light doesn't move once again. I mean, it is a field perturbation, but that's a matter for another discussion. I mean, if we look at it analogously and use uh, platonic retroductive logic and to actually think about what the hell is going on between two magnets, there's nothing actually going on between those two magnets. The only thing that actually defines a magnet, and I don't know why you won't read this in any book anywhere, on magnetism or what the hell magnetism is, because science has never defined a field. And it has absolutely no idea what's going on between two magnets. If you disagree with me, you're a liar, or you simply are just extremely ignorant, because you can go on any website that actually makes uh, billions of dollars worth of magnets and uh, go to their frequently asked page, and somewhere right down the page where they say, how does magnetism, we have no idea. That's all well and fine. It's okay not to know. The problem occurs when you actually have uh, these uh, puffed up pseudo intellectual mental midgets that uh, created the interaction. And this is their own belief system, by the way. And it's nothing other than a sick religion. Is well, virtual photons are occurring between those magnets. This is actually what they do believe and espouse, by the way. But let's let's not dwell upon uh, their stupidity for more than just a second, and let's pass that by. Back to our shadow analogy. Shadow is not a property of the person. A shadow is a privation of light. So when we speak of a shadow, what we're talking about is the privation or absence of the longitudinal field perturbation that we call light, right? A person, of course, everything is capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity. The light that's cast upon the person obviously does not transmit through it. People, generally speaking, are not transparent. <laughs> generally, generally, they're not transparent, right? So, we actually have a shadow that's cast. Now, this shadow is a privation of light, so what is actually occurring is something relational to capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity of the person in relationship to a disturbance of the field that actually surrounds that person. What well, is not surrounding or circumambulating it, but the actual field that envelops that person who's casting a shadow. Nothing is occurring between two magnets. The only thing, as I said, specifically, getting back to that point, that defines a magnet is field coherency. Some of the simple stuff, and of course I got a ton of magnets over here that were outside of arm's reach, but I mean, you all know what the hell a magnet looks like, right? What is the difference between a magnet? There's no quantitative difference between a magnet before it goes into the magnetizer than once it comes out of the magnetizer. Can you actually think about that for a second? There's no quantitative difference between before it becomes a magnet and then once it becomes what we denotatively and connotatively refer to as, oh look, here's a magnet. You know, it's attracted to another magnet or it's attracted to various materials. So what happens? It's a qualitative difference. 
It's incommensurability of the field. Field incommensurability, Fi. Field coherency. The only thing that actually defines a normal light from laser light is field coherency, which is point source. We think of laser light as coherent light, but it is actually point source light. And this actually takes an extremely long time to actually get into and in defining the difference, the, uh, the real quantitative difference between uh, coherency and point source light, but that would take a really long time. But I mean, the only thing that actually defines a magnet is field coherency. In attraction, or what we ignorantly call dielectric acceleration, or what the common human being calls uh, magnetic attraction, there is hyper hyperboloidal, I actually had hourglass shape, a hyperboloidal field acceleration to a net zero Cartesian uh, counter magnitude. Of course, counter magnitude, counter space, I don't care if we say non Cartesian, we say counter space or uh, counter magnitude. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Magnetism, as I said, is denotatively force in motion. This acceleration is increasing inertia. But there's nothing occurring between two magnets. Absolutely nothing. By the way, interestingly enough, and I've shown this in literally like a hundred different videos, if you actually look underneath the ferro cell at uh, bringing two magnets together as they accelerate towards one another, this is not magnetism. Magnetism is the opposite. Magnetism is a force vector. You'll actually see a little hole of light, for lack of a better term. Something is actually created in the field perturbation as these magnets are approaching. It actually gets larger and larger. You could actually see it. A little sinkhole in counter space is forming between these two magnets, but nothing is occurring between the two magnets. The only thing that actually defines a magnet is field coherency by applying platonic retroductive logic to understanding that instantaneous action at a distance or non-contact action at a distance, we can say, even if these magnets are in a complete vacuum, which we can't really achieve a complete vacuum, there's not even a complete vacuum in space, nothing is occurring between these two magnets. They're not touching each other. They're not talking to each other. They're not communicating back and forth about which direction to move, right? I mean, obviously, this is an absurd thought. Nothing is actually occurring. The nature of the qualitative field coherency or field incommensurability that defines each one of these magnets has set up a field pressure not only localized to each magnet, but also a pressure geometry, in this case it would be a counter Cartesian or non Cartesian, acceleration towards counter space. The elimination of spa of course space is not a thing, space is a privation. Space the the idiot Einstein and the uh, quantum uh, physicists are those who actually reified space. Tesla specifically said space had no properties. This is actually a really famous uh, statement from Tesla. And of course, he's completely right. Only the idiot mathematicians actually reified space as something that acts upon something else. To think that space is something that acts upon other things is as stupid as thinking a shadow is something. Well, a shadow is not anything. A shadow is an absence of light. A shadow has no principality. It is a posterior attribute. You have to have a pretty good understanding of platonic logic. Well, it's not that difficult, at least not for me anyway, to understand what a posterior attribute is. In other words, it's not anything that actually stands alone by itself. In other words, if this doesn't exist, then that cannot exist. There's no such thing as a shadow in itself, of itself, by itself. A shadow is an absence of light. Space is exactly like this, analogously. Don't be too direct with me. But there's nothing that is occurring between the two magnets. The magnets have surrounding them a field pressure that acts accordingly. Everything is pressure mediation. What's pressure mediation? It's like saying you pull in the cork on your uh, bathtub and the water flows down it, right? Field pressure. You know, water flows downhill. That's field pressure mediation. I mean, it's not a complex concept at all. Apparently it is for a lot of people. A lot of people in the past say, what do you mean by pressure mediation? It's like, well, what happens when you pull the cork on your bath? Though? Well, the water goes down. It's like, oh, there you go. There's pressure mediation. Um, you can actually see this in the ferro cell. Of course, I knew it was there. I knew it was there regardless because nothing is occurring between the two magnets. Long before I ever discovered the ferro cell, I knew it was occurring. Explaining this to people is somewhat difficult. They actually think something is happening between and evolving, uh, involving uh, a pair of magnets, for example, or a magnet in itself. We could actually, if you take a really large magnet, you could actually and whirl it around your head slowly. You can actually feel the Earth's magnetic field. You can feel it, trust me. Like a 2-inch by 2-inch by 1-inch neodymium ion boron in 50 gauss, you can feel it. 
but nothing's actually occurring between that magnet and the Earth's magnetosphere or between two other magnets. That's not, that's not happening. The only thing that defines a magnet, as I said, is field coherence, your field incommensurability. This means that the region or area, in which case we're talking about the ether, inertia, counter space, within that area, the magnet has set up a pressure mediation which acts upon another pressure mediation, whether you call that magnetic attraction or magnetic repulsion. Of course, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction, as I said. It's dielectric acceleration or increasing inertia or a move towards non-Cartesian a rest, which is true power or true inertia or true counter space. Um, interestingly enough, this takes a lot longer to explain. If you actually stick a couple magnets with a hole in the center and screw them together and place them underneath the ferro cell, you'll actually see this is completely aligned with the right hand rule. You're creating actually a pressure bubble, a toroidal pressure bubble, but actually right hand to the point of pressure, you'll actually see a countersink forming. 90 degrees to the pressure uh, toroid that is occurring between those two magnets under repulsion. That, that is true magnetism, by the way. You're actually increasing the pressure bubble by forcing those against their own native force, and you actually end up with a countersink 90 degrees perpendicular to the direction of the force that is applied to those two magnets. Uh, explaining that is actually not that difficult, but however, it would take a while. Um, it's really an important point that people don't realize is that, you know, they think, and like I said, the shadow analogy is kind of the best, most simple analogy I could come up with, is that there is absolutely nothing occurring between those two magnets at all. And uh, a shadow is not a property of the person that has cast it. The person has set up a change in the pressure permeability, permittivity. We need to say pressure. However, it's not pressure. It's actually, of course, the light is being absorbed by the person in the casting the shadow. But let's not take the analogy too far, that the person is setting up a case in which the field in which that person is, just like the magnet is always in a field. That field, of course, is the inertia and the counter space and the ether that surrounds it and surrounds everything. But it's not surrounded in a Cartesian fashion. It is subspace, counter space. It doesn't matter what you call it. Mother Nature doesn't give a crap what the hell stupid idiot human beings call it. I don't care if people say ether, inertia, counter space. It doesn't make any difference. But there is set up within that by the presence thereof of the person that causes a change in the surrounding field, being the light in this case wherein which a shadow is cast. A shadow is not manifest, it's the absence of light. A shadow, as I said, it is not a thing, it's an absence of something, an absence of light, it's a privation. A shadow is not a thing in itself, but also, too, inductively and retroductively, there is nothing occurring around a magnet or between two magnets in any way, shape, or form at all. Nothing is communicating or occurring between those two magnets. There is nothing there. If we were to place those two magnets in a complete vacuum, if we could get a complete vacuum, we would observe the exact same uh, acceleration or uh, force and motion as they push apart from each other without getting too technical. But that doesn't mean that anything is occurring between those two magnets. Those magnets are not reaching out and communicating. That's an absurdity. What's occurring is the actual field that is everywhere and nowhere, non-Cartesian, has a pressure mediation surrounding the arena that is enveloping that particular region surrounding each coherent field device, that being the magnet. What is occurring is interactions between those field pressure mediations that are enveloping each one of those magnets, but the magnets themselves are not interacting. However, from the superficial level of human conception and ideation with our pathetic limited senses and our even more pathetic intellects, we think that something is occurring between two magnets. But that's an absurdity. Using logic and understanding what the hell is going on, for lack of a better, much more complex uh, denotation in referring to you know, let's analyze this, how it really is. No, nothing is occurring between these two magnets.
It's amazing how something so simplex could actually be so difficult to explain. Some people will get it, other people will just scoff and say, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But, oh, oh, girlfriend, I absolutely do. I could sit here and talk about this topic and go far deeper down the rabbit hole for hours. But then everybody would start to snooze and, uh, you know. <laughs> I could make like, a, make like 20 videos an hour long on this topic alone. Go deeper down the rabbit hole. But no one wants to go that deep. Sure I do. No, yeah, you don't. You just say that, but you don't really mean it. No one cares about this sort of crap. No, they don't. Well, a few people do, but not many. Thanks so much for watching. Lux Everitas.